vibration. Oh, my hands. This is a tool that gives you carpal tunnel and, oh my goodness, and cancer. Oh my goodness, and cancer. Oh my goodness, and cancer. Most austere environment. And cancer. Welcome back, friends. I have a very exciting video for you. I welcome you to the most austere environment that I could find, the perfect test bed for today's survival tool. We are testing a very interesting survival tool from the Zippo company. You guys requested in the last poll that I did, about 53% wanted to see nope. today's review, and man, I have it for you. So take a moment, click that thumbs up. I've been hiking three hours into this environment. We're not testing tools in the backyard. We're coming out to the great lava flows of Mount Fuji. Gnarly. I just jumped a bear cub, right? Just went right through, right through there. That means, that means there's a sow in here. Which way is the wind coming from? So the wind's coming from the west. So she can't win me if I stay up here. I got those lava flow over here to the right. It's, she's not gonna travel in that with that cub. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm just gonna cr creep down off of here and watch and stop and see, make sure as long as the wind, as long as she can't win me, then I should be okay. Ooh. Let's have a look at this interesting tool. Now, they're claiming it's a, a grab and grow, grab and grow, grab and go item that you can not have to fool around with multiple things, multiple being uh, a separate saw and a separate ax, right? I kind of get that. Uh, it's a big, it's a big tool. <laughs> it's not really something. I mean, I I carry my big FSS pack around, uh, and it wouldn't even fit inside that. It was sticking out. So it's uh, it's pretty hefty. We've got uh, the blade there, and we have uh, kind of a polymer style axe. Goodness. Oh. <laughs> okay. It uh, it just ejected itself. All right. Let's uh, go. Oh no. That, that is a romantic, that sound is very familiar. Can anyone tell me what that sounds like? That twanging sound? <laughs> Maybe the $600 survival tool? All right, friends, I think I have it figured out. Let's go with the ax portion. We'll just go through all the details. So this is the provided blade, a typical kind of a bow saw blade. And that is supposed to fit and store in the handle. Now this starts to make a little bit more sense. Uh, you wouldn't, obviously, you wouldn't store it in the, with a saw in there because it takes up too much space. You see, I'm, I am not smart sometimes. Uh, this tensioning device, that closes. Now this becomes, which was the handle, becomes the sheath. Okay, there we have it right there. That is not too bad, actually. That's something a guy could take and throw it in the back of a truck. I'd like to see this be a metal pole, but that's what we have. Now this closes. And that secures with this 
thumb screw, which is captured by the way. Nice touch. And this forms the handle. But it's a sharp blade. Now this will go in here. And there's a spring tension. Spring tension that keeps that at the correct pressure or tension. It seems to me the best way to test these tools is, my goodness, it's gonna be a bad fire season. We're at 5,500 feet in June, and it's as dry as dry can be. Anyway, a good test is gonna be to process uh, a couple pieces of firewood. It gives you the ability to cut, uh, fall, fall, split, that, that whole deal. So let's see how the bow saw works. Look at this tree. It caught on fire and just laid down and died. What do we have here, Ponderosa? Now, I've not been a big fan of bow saws in the past, because I've always had a hard time cutting straight with them. Now, the handle, it's, it's okay, it's not great, it's not very comfortable, it's not something you'd want to cut with very long, it's a very strange shape. It, on harder stuff, it'd be nice, it's nice to use these two-handed, and you can, definitely can to a certain extent. That shallow design on the front makes it tough for cutting anything large like this. And this is not what I would consider to be large. I mean, you cut anything smaller than this, trying to get a fire going, and you're, uh, you just can work yourself to death. You need something with some size. My hand is hurting from holding on because of the awkwardness of the shape of the ax head. That was not a pleasant experience, but it, it got through it. But how does it split? Goodness, that's a long ways down there. Professional homeowners like to pick chopping blocks near precipices so when their wood splits, it falls down in the creek and drifts away. Already have I forgotten myself here. All right, you gotta loosen this guy. Blade falls out. Blade stores in the handle. I already poked a hole in myself with the blade coming down here, so be careful. That's a good feature. This stows back here. Let's see, that locks into place like that. Okay, that's it. We have no more use for the sheath outside of just safety carrying it. Now, I have some serious concerns, and you probably are going to as well. Look how thin that blade is. Oh, it's, it's unhandy. Uh, it's an ungainly, goofy feeling thing. I mean, just to have it in my hand, the balance is, is very bad. Uh, the handle diameter is nice, I do like that. The shape is uncomfortable, it's got a flat edge on the bottom, so that hurts your hand when you're trying to work with it. I mean, it will split wood. We've got perfectly dry pine here, but man, if it was something that was weedy or knotty, uh, you'd have some problems with that. But it, it's getting it done. But the handle is not very nice, terrible shape. We should be able to find a suitable small snag. Oh, brothers, I'm reluctant to go in there. That is a death, death zone, a danger zone. There's a pretty stiff wind picking up. That whole field of trees, they call those snags, the dead ones, they call them the silent killers. They fall down all the time. Let's chop on this one here. It's not so big that I couldn't probably survive or crawl out of here if it landed on me. Oh, it's dry, man. It is dry. This is going to be bone dry wood here. The loggers hate salvaging this burnt timber. They just get filthy. Okay, right off the bat, as soon as I grab it, what would or should be the fawn's foot of an axe and the most where you have the power uh, is uh, very uncomfortable. <laughs> we got uh, hard edges and screws and a hollow. Oh, it's terrible. Right there. I mean, it's just painful and I haven't even started yet. Uh, we might not get through this tree. We'll, we'll see how it goes. But uh, up. But uh, it's nice and long and it is heavy, so. Is that sharp? Machine sharp, pretty sharp actually though. Oh, the vibration. Oh, my hands. This is a tool that gives you carpal tunnel and, oh my goodness, and cancer. It's, it's terrible. Oh, I, I can't take it. I can't bear it. It's gonna hurt my, it hurts hurting my hand. The vibration is so awful. Let me choke up a little bit. I mean, I, choking up on an ax is lame, but if we had to do that, what would we, what would happen? 
Oh, it's just so terrible. Oh, it's just, it's hateful. Shame on Zippo. These are my opinions, of course. Now, see the springs come out? That's jabbed me in the hand. When you thought of Zippo before this, what did you think of? You thought of their heritage, their wonderful lighters, the old World War II lighters, you know, all that stuff. You know, just who doesn't, doesn't like the Zippo, a Zippo? Iconic, classic. You just, you can't build a reputation like that short of 100 years, right? What are you doing? Why would you do this? Why would you make something? Is it worth it to solely your, reputa your reputation to make a quick buck? The shilling that's taking place with these companies that, are, that are, were so good and had such great names and made such good stuff, uh, these uh, vultures coming in and buying up these companies and using that name to peddle trash to people, their hard-earned money is, it's shameful. Final thoughts on the Zippo 4-in-1 tool. The fourth tool that I didn't mention, I believe someone told me was a tent stake puller. You, maybe you stick that underneath there, I'm guessing. We'll have to give them the benefit of the doubt on that and assume that it does indeed work. As far as the saw goes, uh, the saw is what you'd expect from basically a very poorly made bow saw. All the problems that are inherent with those, the twisting and the warping and the binding and all of that. Very uh, bad design here in that the, this area, the distance between the handle and the blade is so small. So the more you're cutting, your stroke continues to get smaller and smaller until you then you just end up doing these little tiny strokes back and forth. East Coast guys, you'll know what I'm talking about. And then you're not very effective, right? Regarding the ax, well, it is not great. As far as splitting, it's not gonna be a good splitter because of that shape, that design is too skinny. And then there's not even a wedge right there. They could have at least redeemed themselves if they would have ramped that up. So it would have forced those, pop that wood apart, but they didn't do that. I don't think really there was a lot of caring about function of this. And then the blade is forced to be really deep like this because it has to act as a handle and that you gotta have to have your hand on there right there. So poorly balanced, really heavy on the front. It's got a plastic pole. It's not gonna be very durable, but that could be a benefit if you don't wanna mar things up. So I wouldn't fault that too much. Uh, but the handle, uh, let us go to the handle. When we're talking about falling, the steel, I don't know. I don't see any chips or anything. We cut into some pretty hard old wood, but uh, it's just such a bad uh, material. It's such a bad shape. It's got that flat, sh uh, flat edge on there, which leaves these edges right where it bites and, and hurts and cuts into your hand. Right here where you need to hold on the strongest with an ax or a hatchet, you've got this funky clasping mechanism uh, that is very uncomfortable to the hand and is completely open on this end. This migrated out, then I had a sharp jagged edge, that stainless steel that was poking me, uh, so that did happen. And just the overall terribleness of the shock, um, and this latch is not intuitive whatsoever. Uh, just the shock, uh, the lack of deadening ability, and there are materials like hickory that are so much better that don't transfer all that energy into your arm so when you hit it i mean it's just bone jarring it's very uncomfortable and it can cause injury and it's it's awful it's not necessary so that in itself is a fail handle materials a fail handle design and shape is a fail axe is a fail uh it's just um it's just not great i wouldn't buy one i wouldn't recommend it but that's just my opinion if you think otherwise have at it knock yourself out Thanks for watching. May God bless you and your families. Please keep us in your prayers. Tomorrow, we're going to go fishing. I'll bring you along for that, our first fishing trip of the year. And if we have internet, I might even live stream, so watch for that as well. If you haven't already, we appreciate if you could click the thumbs up. I'm working hard out here for you guys, and uh, it helps us. So if you don't like it, click the thumbs down. doesn't matter. Either one. Just show engagement. Keep us in your prayers. We'll see you on the next video.